Coast Leach. Uh, we're open for questions. So anybody press that has questions, please ask, uh, ask them. Coach? Any questions? I guess, Mike, what kind of the, the last couple of days of practice looked like for you guys? Do you, you feel like you got out of your unit and your group kind of what you were looking for? I think we've improved. I think we've had short practices, and it's been pretty good work, you know? So, yeah, I think it's been pretty good. Players were switching around their jersey numbers the other day. that throw you off a little bit? Uh, just a little. Um, yeah, they, the, the, all the skilled guys want to wear lineman jerseys and vice versa. Um, and actually, we used to do that at Tech every Thursday. Uh, but... Uh, yeah, a little bit, but then you, you try to sort out body types and stances and stuff. But, uh, <clears throat> but yeah, 63 all of a sudden got a lot more miniature out there yesterday. Well, Tech fans are fantastic. I mean, they're, uh, I mean, as, uh, you know, as they're 10 years, and those were, the, I think we shared some great 10 years there. And, I hear from tech fans all the time, and uh, and always excited to hear from them. And then, of course, from my former players and stuff like that, I hear from them a lot too. So, um, and actually, um, even have some <clears throat> tech fans that you know uh, even you know helped them get into the hotel, the whole thing. Which I'd like to think they're rooting for Mississippi State this time around, and they probably are. But uh, you know, they're tech fans, and I met them there at Texas Tech. No, I'm kind of getting used to that. Um, you know, there's a point to where uh, as much fun as that sounds, um, <clears throat> you know, you got so much going on on the sideline that you're just trying to s sort it out and solve the problems, you know. There's a quick, hi, how are you doing before the game starts. But uh, um, I'm trying to think as far as play. Yeah, I, um, well, there's a number of guys that played for me that are out there coaching, too. I lose track, but a lot of uh, guys that worked for me or played for me. What do you remember about Sonny as a player? He's a good player. Came in as a walk-on. Came in as a walk-on from Snyder, which is right down the road, and uh, just continued to practice. Made himself a good player. Uh, really threw a great fade route. Um, you know, just... Uh, uh, progressively improved and I mean just uh, kind of did what he's told followed the recipe and got better and better and of course became a starter so I did kind of yeah as a matter of fact he was a I don't know if as a student assistant or a GA for me for a while It was a big bowl victory, I'll tell you, because, uh, you know, it was literally the state of Texas versus the state of California. Um, Texas played USC in the national championship, and we played uh, Cal, I think, was the only team that had be <coughs> beaten USC. And, uh, and yeah, they're a loaded up group. Uh, but uh, Sonny threw for 415 yards or something like that. Aaron Rodgers threw for 260. And we had a big day, and uh, of course they also had, uh, well, Deshaun Jackson, Marshawn Lynch, a bunch of defensive players. It was a, it was a great game. It was, it was a wild game, and it was an exciting game. Uh, Sonny's making the transition from an OC to a head coach. Do you remember that transition was like for you going from Oklahoma Tech? Yeah, let me. <clears throat> You know, you just have more stuff to balance. You have more stuff to balance. You got starting out, you have more to do than you have time to do it. Um, you know, because it's a blur, and so you got to figure out what's most important. And then uh, <clears throat> some problems you have to sort out which ones you're going to wait out and which ones that you're going to address. And because uh, some will solve themselves. And then uh, and you got a lot of stuff to balance. The first thing that first and quickest lesson I learned is I needed to hire a staff otherwise I was gonna be recruiting the whole class myself and so <clears throat> I raced in my office I picked up the phone started calling a bunch of uh, 
<clears throat> prospects. I called about uh, 10 of them. And then I thought, what the hell am I doing? I go, this and that, we'll never get anybody recruited if I'm just sitting here calling them all myself. I said, you know, even though I have to spend two days, which are two days I don't have, um, I need to get a staff here. I need to hire a staff so that, um, you know, we can kind of duplicate our efforts here. So I got the staff hired, got them on the road, and had a pretty good class. So. Mike, uh, Sonny said that Yeah, um, yeah, and then, we, well, we wanted him to feel that way because we thought he was a pretty good player. We thought he was a pretty good player, and we were filled up on <clears throat> quarterbacks and um, and thought he could, uh, you know, develop into a scholarship guy, which I think it took him a year was all. I don't know. I don't know how much differences there is. Everybody wants differences. You know, everybody wants to have differences, so then they feel like they're special and the other guy's not quite as special as they are. You know, I mean, I don't know how many differences there are. I think, uh, you know, both of them throw it well. Both of them run it well. Both of them have some variety in offense. Um, uh, I, think, uh, I think in some cases D-lines are better in the SEC. I think the skilled guys are similar. You've seen it for a couple of years now, but maybe more this year than ever, the transfer, the transfer portal has seen a lot of guys in it. How does that change offseasons for teams and just how much movement there could be from the players? Yeah, hard to tell. I mean, I think we're still trying to sort it out. I think as coaches, we don't know exactly. I think we're, you know, uh, even though I'm against it, I've uh, it hasn't hurt me very much, um, our teams. Um, are, uh, with rare exception, anybody we lost for the guys we needed to lose. And um, <clears throat> we've certainly gotten some good players as a result of the transfer portal. You know, uh, Gardner Minshew at uh, Washington State and Mackay Polk here at, uh, at uh, Mississippi State. So, um, you know, I think that it's a... Uh, uh, yeah, I think I, th I think don't don't ignore it as a resource. I think in the in the end, I think I guess I feel like uh, the core of your team needs to be built with high school kids. Um, <clears throat> you know, guys that really come to your program because they're really excited about it and and really want to uh, lock into what you have to offer and what you're doing. And then, um, but don't ignore the transfer portal as a resource. And then um, <clears throat> we'll see what happens. You know. I forget the number, something like 3,500 uh, people that were in the transfer portal were left out in the cold last year. So I think that's damaging. That's pretty damaging to those that don't find a place. And some of them are guys that needed to get themselves sorted out, <coughs> sorted out to begin with, you know. And then, and then, in, uh, you know, hopefully they all get, get degrees because the world's better if they have degrees, I think. And then, uh, uh, so I think that's a very damaging aspect of it that people don't talk about. They just talk about the glory end of it. And then, um, you know, but don't ignore it as a resource. And, and uh, but how, how much to indulge it, that's the trick. That's the balance. I mean, how many slots do you save for the transfer portal? Who knows, you know? No, I'm against it because I think it damages. I think it damages individuals and it damages teams. I think um, there were a lot of times when I was, you know, 18 years old or so, and uh, you know, you know, things would get tough. And you know, sometimes people encouraged me to push through. Sometimes I uh, did it on my own. Sometimes, but you know. If it's just if if all of a sudden it's easy to cut and run, and that was also kind of something you didn't do back then. If it, if it's easy to cut and run, you don't finish out some things that I think are highly beneficial, that are incredibly beneficial to people. 
And uh, if you don't believe me, ask the 3,500 that went in the portal that didn't, didn't end up anywhere, you know, how, how, how the portal helped them. And then uh, uh, I do think in some cases, you know, the flexibility is, is good. But, you know, they, they already pretty much have that, you know. They, they, they already pretty much, uh, you know, have that. You know, you have to sit a semester or whatever uh, originally. Or if you graduate. I like that one. I always thought, you know, if a guy graduates, going to go on and get a master's, wants to transfer, whether even if it's for playing purposes, he can go ahead and do it, you know. But there ought to be some things that uh, in it that uh, really encourage um, graduation, and really encourage. And if a, if a guy's graduated and he decides he's going to transfer, I mean, that guy's worked like crazy there. He's established himself there. He you know he knows the strengths and the weaknesses. It's not just cutting out. But you know, but you know some of these guys, if you let them, they'll just transfer somewhere every year. Well, that's madness, you know. And I can think of a few instances of that. And it's ridiculous. Just, uh, you lost me. Well, just in terms of all these new philosophies with the transfer portal with players opting out, just these new different ways where the roster change, makeup can change on an instant. Well, I think the dust is going to settle on it at some point, you know. Uh, I've mentioned before, I think opting out is ridiculous and, uh, you know, contrary to what's been said, uh, no, I offered to stay for every bowl that uh, I was a part of. And then, you know, but a coach is, and if you you don't believe me, ask Sonny right now, a coach is busy as can be going off somewhere to be a head coach. A guy, quote, unquote, preparing for the NFL, he's not doing anything. He's not doing it. The training center's not open. The NFL's busy playing. I mean, he's not doing anything. Uh, the best the best training he can be doing is preparing for a game and playing in a game. And yet, you know, some, somebody will get invited to the Pro Bowl, they're going to play in the Pro Bowl, you know. Uh, well, what about getting injured in that game, you know? I mean, so, no, it, it, it doesn't make any sense to me. How do those conversations go with the players that do ultimately opt out? Uh, short. I mean, uh, you know, I, I, I tell them what I just told you, and then uh, – you know, they go ahead and do it, and then uh, off we go. So, you know, you move on with the guys that are there. So, Did uh, Malik Keith make, make the trip with you guys, and do you have any update on how he's doing? Yeah, we're, yeah, we don't have any comment on who made the trip or who didn't make the trip. You know, we'll let, uh, we'll let the, our opponents sort that out, you know, so. Uh, I don't, yeah, again, you lose track of that when it comes to the, when it comes to the, uh, you know, once the, the ball's kicked off, you know, then it's, you know, it's, it's like, uh, I don't know, I was, was going to say a really intense video game, although I get, uh, then occurred to me, I don't play video games. Um, uh, yeah, I just, uh. You know, just kind of this really intense because you know, on on the best sideline, on the best football sideline, um, it's organized chaos. You know, I mean, because uh, people running everywhere, doing this, doing that. You know, and uh, and because um, there's so many moving parts, and uh, so along with that, a lot of the sentimentality uh, goes right out the window because uh, you know. Uh, that's overtaken by, you know, what the hell did the right guard do on this last play? I mean, where was the receiver? And then uh, did that safety roll down or did he stay back? I mean, um, <clears throat> are we still having trouble with that defensive end? Yeah, I mean, it just gets all into a uh, mishmash of uh, trying, and then you do it all within 25 seconds, try to attack, you know, what the other guy's doing, so. I, you know, I'm too close to the fire to really say on that. People, I've heard people say that about, you know, some of us, you know, or like uh, somewhere how we talk or the slang or the, uh, you know, just the vernacular or whatever. And, and I, I can't say they're wrong. I'm just, you know, I mean, uh, you know, some of that stuff, uh, I'm not even aware that, uh, you know, if they say, yeah, they're a lot like you, they probably are. I mean, I'm not... You know, I'm not keeping close track on, uh, 
some of it, you know. Is there anything about Texas Tech that sticks out to you that might challenge you guys tomorrow? Oh, they're explosive. I think, well, I think the whole thing at Texas Tech will, cha you know, be challenging. I think they, you know, they're, they're a good explosive football team. I think they, um, you know, just, uh, and, well, I had a hand in building this. I mean, it's a, it's a kind of a tough, a tough never, never surrender mentality, you know, which uh, I'd like to think I had a lot to do with elevating that. And then, uh, and uh, you know, and uh, in those players that I had the pleasure of coaching, the coaches I had the opportunity to coach. And um, no, I mean, it's, it's just, I don't think it's going to be easy. I think they're, I think they're tough. I think they're not going to quit, and I think they're explosive. Yeah, no. I'm thinking about okay. If I if we run this play, is this guy going to be open or that guy going to be open? Maybe instead we should run this one. Uh, you know, who should play receiver on this particular play? Uh, this back or that back? No, it's, you get wound up in the you get caught in the weeds too far to do that. You do that when you're old. You know, you do that. You do that when you um. No, uh, you sit around somewhere, maybe with somebody in the summer. If you run into one of these guys that you worked against, and uh, and you know, <laughs> then you might do a little of that, you know. Like uh, yesterday, that he appreciates that you give him the, the ability to you know check at the line, audible. I guess what goes into you being a quarterback coach goes into building that trust where you feel confident the quarterback has the ability to. <laughs> Well, you just ingrain it, you know, from the first day, you know, from the first day on, and even through film. I mean, what do you like here? What do you like there? What would you do here? What about this, you know? Michael Rogers, uh, which of your Texas Tech quarterbacks does he, does he most like and in what ways? Uh, they're all pretty unique. Um, they're all pretty unique. Oh. Well, he's a lot like Graham from the standpoint he had the ability to play real play early, and his father was a uh, a high school coach and knew a lot about offense and liked throwing the ball, so already had a good knowledge base and already had a good ability to watch film, and uh, you know, and in Will's case was out of necessity forced to play early because it's not exactly my favorite thing to play a true freshman, but I did anyway, and I didn't have a choice, you know, and then. Um, uh, but ready to play early, it didn't, uh, and he, you know he keeps getting better too. Hey Mike, just a, a local question: Just how are you guys liking Memphis so far? They got it a couple days ago. Uh, it's been great. You know, I mean, it's a it's a deal where you could have a lot of fun in Memphis. You know, if you if you weren't preoccupied with the, all the you know the practice and whatnot. But you know, Memphis is right up the road from Starkville, so I've kind of been mapping it out. You know, maybe. You know, uh, spend about uh, four days in the Peabody, check it all out. You know, go to all the stuff that I didn't really have time to do this trip. But uh, you know, going back to Will, I guess what have you seen from him this year that's been the biggest improvement, whether it's on the field or just maturation? Um. <clears throat> Well, I mean, he progressively he does a great job in the locker room. He is never one of those guys. <clears throat> I'm a young guy. I'm afraid to talk. I'm afraid to say something. He was never like that. And so then I think he got people behind him very quickly. I just think all together he's getting, you know, like, uh, you, you know, you try not to have a quarterback with just a glaring weakness or even a player. You just try to avoid guys that have um, totally glaring weaknesses. But then you, you want to just sort of improve things overall, just, you know, kind of improve them one brick at a time. And, and I didn't feel like he has glaring weaknesses. I think his feet are getting a little quicker. I think the ball's coming off his hand a little faster. I think he um, <clears throat> can throw it a little further. I think he's uh, improving and quicker with his reads, but I think he's a work in progress on all of it. I don't think I can lift that thing up. I don't know. I, 
I could practice. I'll, um, well, well, well I'd, I'll definitely have to have a guy on either side, I would think. I mean, that's, it looks heavy anyway, and I don't think they're giving out a plastic trophy because there's one in my office that's it's actually got that thing in it. So I, rung, I rang it a little bit, you know, to see if it would actually ring. I didn't want to crack it, you know, because historically it cracked. And then, um, but it, uh, it'll make a little bit of noise for you. Well, I know that they are all very proud of it. I think that it wasn't. It was it, the the one was the second or third one, you know. And then I think that, and maybe I'm wrong about that. And then um, they rang it, and you know, had the big day. It's going to be the biggest bell ever. Rang it, and then they just cracked the hell out of it. And then they uh, loved the fact that it symbolized uh, freedom and liberty, something that I think our country ought to keep in mind nowadays. And because uh, <clears throat> you know. Right now, it's a cottage industry to invent rules on everything, so maybe they ought to take a gander at the Liberty Bell and the fact that it does represent freedom and liberty, uh, hence the Liberty Bowl, okay? And then um, the, uh, uh, but you know, despite the imperfection, it represents something that was very important to our country, and so it's withstood the test of time. kind of dynamic guy, you know, has pretty quick feet, uh, you know, can spit the ball, uh, you know, out of his hand, that type of thing. I think he's going to, I think he's going to be a really good player. I think, you know, I think he is now and I think that, you know, he's going to get more and more experience and build on that. Do you try to rattle a guy like that? Has he have played at this, you know, level in his college before career yet? Well, we try to rattle all of them. I mean, you know, we, we do. try to rattle all of them, try to hit them too, you know, so. No, I probably ought to think of some because I, I mean, I think the wise thing for me would be to narrow it down to just a couple because I, I mean, if we, if we address all the problems, that's probably going to be too comprehensive and too many to address, you know. So we might have to work on this a couple years at a time. I don't know if I don't know how many of what who and what it's a very enthusiastic crowd I mean it's a very excited and enthusiastic crowd and of course the cowbell is a is a symbol that's very important to us at Mississippi State and um, you know these like to celebrate football in a bowl and I don't know how many of each side are showing up but and I, I would think quite a few and so um, I, I, advantage. I don't know if it's advantage, but I'm thrilled to have them there. Is it, are you thrilled to have the Bells back? I know you couldn't have them at the, the Liberty Bowl back in September. Uh, I'm th yeah, thrilled to have them and also, uh, uh, also thrilled to have any Tech fans that are rooting for Mississippi State. I would certainly encourage all of them to do that. Have you ever had a school with fans that are rooting for you before? I don't know, maybe, I, you have to ask him, I guess, but uh, maybe, I mean, uh, yeah, I hope so. I kind of like the energy going one way or the other, you know, like, uh, um, you know, it's not all bad to, that if they hate you either. I mean, we used to go to Kyle Field, the whole place would hate me, so that's, that, that had its own charm to it too, you know. You'd walk in there, turn and hiss at the crowd, and it's like uh, being at an Ozzy Osbourne concert for four hours. It was outstanding, you know. Uh, not a big one, you know. I mean, I, we know where the locker room is, although we're not even in that locker room this time around, so. Is there anything about Lubbock in particular that you missed? Oh, yeah. Well, one, it's Kegel Steaks. Uh, if you haven't been to Lubbock, go eat at Kegel Steaks. Uh, that'd be one for sure. Uh, the people are uh, been great people there, you know. Um, uh, you know, I had a great experience in Lubbock, you know, over 
Uh, and of course, every any time you build, it's exciting to build. And you know, of course, we went to ten straight bowls, and <clears throat> yeah, it was it was an exciting time. So, uh, but you know, I miss everywhere that I've been to or coached at for different reasons. You know, um, they all I haven't been anywhere that. <clears throat> I have uh, negative memories of or that I wouldn't want to go back to. I thought they were all pretty exciting for different reasons. And <clears throat> But the, the biggest thing generally is the people because people are pretty good peop uh, people everywhere. I mean, well, I guess in, in Lubbock there were four bad apples that were determined to cheat me out of my salary. I mean, we know about that. But uh, in the other four years on my contract and and then continue to, uh, to hide... Uh, the documents illegally, but uh, short of that, I mean, I thought everybody was great, you know. I know you said this doesn't feel personal, but is this sort of a revenge game for you? Well, but I don't have anything against uh, Texas Tech per se. I have the utmost respect for their team, and their fans, and their players, <clears throat> their coaches, you know. So, and then the other thing is, is you know, I take a lot of pride in what we accomplish at Texas Tech. Uh, well, I mean, you'd rather not. I've been I've been willing to settle this thing for a long time, but uh, you know, um, but uh, you know, they don't seem to be willing to. So you know, I think that's unfortunate. So I think all the people there are great, but <clears throat> you know, some of the leadership is, uh, you know, they're uh, at least when I was there was very sleazy and slimy and dirty and uh, and. Uh, Oh, yeah, and I enjoyed naming names on it too, and um, uh, which I might as well. But uh, um, yeah, they all know who they are, and the tech people know who they are too. So I mean, we should uh, get this thing settled. They should pay me, and you know, we should all celebrate, uh, you know, achievements together. But uh, that doesn't seem to be, you know, what they have in mind, and you know, they. They talk about uh, they had some investigation or something. They never had an investigation. Uh, they lied about having an investigation. And then they won't produce the documents to prove they had an investigation. Well, it just goes to show you how Kent Hans and some of his little cronies, how sleazy those guys are. And um, so let's go ahead and see it. And, and of course, it's going to illustrate they lied to the fans and everybody else. So, um, and then they continue to hide documents on everything from sexual assault and everything else. So. Um, you know the leadership of anywhere that uh, that uh, categorically and uh, uh, that hides uh, documents that the public has a right to see. Well, think about that, and it's really a shame because the, the good people in Lubbock, Texas, and West Texas deserve quite a lot better. So. You said, you said four bad apples. You were referring to. Uh, I, I may do it in some other setting. I have for well, I have for years and. Um, I could give you another copy of my book. It's all in there, you know. And that, the funny thing about it, I wrote the book Swing Your Sword, um, I don't know, years ago. And then, um, uh, and then, you know, I'm thinking more uncover and stuff like that, you get where I talk about the departure from tech. Every bit of it's true, 100 percent true, and nothing has changed in uh, uh, either direction on it. How about that? Thank you, Coach. Forever. Why not? I mean, what do I got to lose? You know, I, I don't have anything to lose. I mean, they, they cheated me out of $2.6 million plus uh, four years remaining on my contact attract, and I think settling for 2.6 is very generous on my part. And, uh, and then the hiding of documents becomes even more disgusting because, you know, that shows a level of corruption. So, you know, um, you know, I mean, I I wouldn't even uh, r rule out uh, some uh, you know criminal prosecutions on the thing. I mean, we'll see how it unfolds. Uh, the the big first thing they teach is never be your own attorney. That's the first thing they teach in law school, which I think is pretty good advice. All right, thanks, guys. All right, thank you. Let me ask you one question. Yeah. 